We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boys' hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillion logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for What's up, Vex heads, and welcome to episode 17 of Flagged for Content, a Flags for Good podcast. It's the only podcast that's gradually working to close the time portal that it opened last episode. So this episode was recorded on the same day, just about five hours apart. So again, we're figuring it out. We're getting it kind of closer and closed, but we're not quite there yet. In any case, we have an amazing show for you this week. I'm sure you noticed, if you're watching this anyway on YouTube, you can see me. Look, I'm moving. It's wild. In any case, uh, which I just said, this is our first video episode, so that's exciting. Our first full one anyway. I know we did a bonus one earlier in the year with Billy Wayne Davis, but this is going to be the norm from now on. So I am going to try and make sure and... Keep audio as the focus and everything. I know it's a podcast first and foremost, but there is going to be, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be a couple times where you might wish that you were watching the video in case something does come up that I just can't explain audio wise. Anyway, that's all very exciting. Um, another thing you may notice coming up is there are ads on the show now, at least as far as the audio versions go, at least on most platforms, I imagine. If you hear any weird ads, let me know for sure, because I want to know that. I don't get to pick all of them, unfortunately, but those ads do help us keep the lights on over here. So I'm sorry that I had to come to that, but it has. But, you know, that's a sign of growth, right? It's good. I like it. I like it. You like it, too. And yeah, let's see. What else? Oh, we have to shout out our Instagram winner. And finally... Getting it first after having gotten it second for so many of the most recent weeks or competitions, FIMO Flags of the World. That's F-I-M-O Flags of the World on Instagram. No spaces, no underscores, any of that. And he's the one that we actually talk about during this episode. And I think I mentioned during the last episode who does all of the like clay, like the modeling clay flag. So go check out FIMO Flags of the World on Instagram. Very cool follow. He's done all the flags of the world and has moved on to British counties now. So very exciting. Anyway, all that just to get to the episode. I'm sure you don't need telling that we've got an amazing guest this week, as usual, or that I'm doing less editing. <laughs> that will be very obvious as well. But I don't think I have anything else to get into other than if you're not a huge fan of the ads we will have some Patreon options coming up. So, you know, keep uh, keep an eye out for that. And without any further ado than I've already done, let's get into the episode. I must be dreaming because this week I've got a very, very special guest. You may know him as the guy who occasionally works with puppet Kevin from Flag Monkey. You know him from seeing his holiday videos where he talks about city and national flags. And you know him as the megalomaniac genius, his words, behind the YouTube channel Flags in 50. It's Tarith Peacock! Hello, hello. What's up, Tarith? Oh, I'm just a little bit excited to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> a little been, bit? Been a lot just yeah long time waiting i know i reached out to you many months ago and then you ignored me obviously and got other people instead but no <laughs> yeah obviously i was like well what does this guy have to you know what's he got from me <laughs> yeah fair enough fair enough no, no i am i am thrilled to have you on man it's an absolute pleasure to be here i'm Thank thrilled to have you on much. it's it's been yeah no of course thrilled to have you like i said it's been uh it's been quite a while quite a long time in coming here as we have, you know, chatted, you were one of the first people I think in the flag community that I really like kind of chatted to and formed a connection with and everything. And then 
eventually like hey you want to be on an episode because you seem like a great fucking person for it (laughs) and then even then we had not really scheduling issues just um just the fact that i surprisingly for myself anyway had scheduled a little bit far out in advance and we got to you finally so (laughs) it's it's good to have a plan and plan ahead i find so it's all good it's all good just means i've had all this time to build up for it exactly and and yeah and like you said plan and and get everything so i'm sure we won't have to i won't have to do any edits or anything today it's going to make my life easier (laughs) you have no idea on how much editing i have to do for a 50 second episode i can tell you that oh i no, i've seen your episodes i can imagine and and leading into that um i wanted to know so like i said that third thing that i said on your credits flags in 50. yeah so who if you could explain to the listeners, like, what is or who is Flags in 50 parentheses seconds and just kind of like, what do you do over on your channel? So uh, my channel, which is currently branded as Flags in 50, um, was previously uh, branded as Flags in 50 seconds because the premise used to be that I would try and talk about a particular flag, which is usually a national flag, but not always. Um and cram it all into a 50 second um, short bite episode. And originally it was done uh, as a work thing, nothing to do with the internet and everything. It was all done as works. uh, And it was brought in originally uh, as part of COVID when the whole world suddenly stopped um, and when everybody was sent home. Um, The organization was very much, we need to keep in contact people. So, uh, and lots of little, groups of people around in the workplace start to do little things or well, not groups because obviously we're all sitting at home on our own um and there was one guy who did a radio show for the company i mean it's, it's a big company that i work for um and so lots of people did other things so i thought well why don't i just jump on this and I, i've got a passion for flags and so i just show the boss that i'm not wasting too much time i keep them down to less than a minute <laughs> in little episodes once a week then you know th- th- they'll all be happy with that and that's how it started and then eventually I uploaded all of those onto a, a YouTube channel and then that was born just over a couple of years ago. And then I've dropped the second part um, a little while back and started venturing into more and more bigger and better things since then. So that, that's that's the premise of where I'm at with that channel. Right, right. I, I was going to say, I knew you first as Flags in 50 and didn't even know that there was the seconds part kind of tagged on to the end of that. Um, until I kind of went over to your YouTube and, and saw a few of your older videos. Like, um, I don't know if they they technically don't qualify as shorts. Cause I think those are like 15 seconds or whatever, but like yeah, yeah. went over and saw like, okay, so this guy can explain an entire flag in 50 seconds where it takes me an hour and a half to get through, like, I don't know, three. <laughs> so that's what like 30 minutes of flag <laughs> because I am, if nothing, if not like verbose, like as you, as a listener know for sure. I will talk and talk and talk about X flag and Y flag and, and all that stuff. But yeah, you found a cool way I thought to kind of condense at least the most important information down into 50 seconds and then kind of spun off from that, I guess you would say. Yes. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, I'm big fan. Be, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm thinking very much. I mean, yeah, yeah, I did miss a few <laughs> details out of course, just little technical ones, but, um, I, I think after a while I was thinking, yeah, there's, there is a lot of detail that I'm missing out here. Um, and obviously once I started doing sure, it on yeah, YouTube yeah. and I didn't have the constraints of, of the whole being at work thing, I thought, right, I need to, I need to build into this and start learning from what I've done before. Because right. um, as you say, some of the early episodes that I've done is just me standing in front of a flag and just talking at the camera for 50 seconds and that's it there was no it, it literally took me 50 seconds to to film and record and upload and that was it and it takes a little <laughs> longer so um yeah right we, we progress we we learn and we um move forward if it was me i would go into it yeah oh for sure if it was me i would go into it like with the idea to do like a flags in 50 seconds and they would end up a flags in 50 minutes thing and i would be like all right so just keep the flags in 50. We're going to rebrand a little bit here. But anyway, that's me. And I talk too much, which I'm doing right now. I, I did want to know, like, from you. So, like, that's a good setup for flags in 50. But um, so you said, like, yeah, you got into that, like, when, you know, lockdowns and all that stuff came at work. 
but what got you into flags? Because surely you were into flags before that to kind of have that like passion, like resting there anyway. So what got you into them back in the day? And, and, and what was back in the day for you? Right. So th this, this will lead into another question of yours that's coming up, I'm sure. Um, so I'll, I'll answer a question that's yet to happen in the future because I love a bit of time travel. Um, so the, the whole premise of my interest in flags started pretty much during my school days, which obviously wasn't that long ago. Um, when Obviously. I realized or found out that actually, um, well, it was a, something at school that we were talking about where people come from, where they were born and this, that and the other. And everybody was going on, oh, all local people. Um, there was a U.S. air base not far from where we, we lived as well. So we had a few U.S. people um, in, in the okay, class as yeah. well, which was great. So they talked about their places. And of course, I had to do a bit of research for me and, and um, coming and being born from in Cyprus because uh, my parents were in the RAF at the time, back in 1974. Um, so, uh, and, and nobody else was was in that same room. I've only ever in my life met one other person who's the same age as me, who was born in the same hospital that I was for the same reasons. Anyway, I digress. So knowing that I came from Cyprus originally, um, and therefore, <laughs> covering the flag of that because most of the time it was the uk flag which is where i lived there was the us flag and then there was the cyprus flag right. <laughs> so yeah that's me <laughs> so, but that got me interested in going oh yeah. what else is out there? what other flags are out there and, it, and it's just spawned then but um but it's always been sort of a background interest in, until um you know recently where i've actually had the, the freedom to now go right i'm going to do something about this and make it more than an interest, make it more into a hobby. And, and it's, it's built, built into this now. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it definitely like snowballed, bouldered, whatever you want to say into something bigger and bigger and bigger to where you're at the point yeah. now where you're doing things like, I mean, we'll go ahead and jump into it. I'm, I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but we'll get back to a few of them. Um, but to the point where you went to Qatar recently for the sporting event that was there yes. and, uh, and from, from talking to you, you know, off air, it sounds like you more or less went for the flags and less for the actual sport of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan, a uh, football fan fanatic at all. Um, okay. So yeah, m much of my work colleagues were were aghast when I'm going, I'm going, going to Qatar next week. What? <laughs> but you, you don't even talk about it. Right, so yeah. Um, <laughs> But the, uh, the the other half <laughs> wanted to go to a, a, a football um, a World Cup, and I said I'd, I'd go with them. And and, and but I, I, yeah, I wanted to go to Qatar, and, and I just wanted to see the flags because um, and boy, did they not? Um, you know, they they went full out on their whole national flag piece while uh, while there. So yeah, I yeah. was kid in a candy shop really. Right. I don't blame you. I, I would imagine for a lot of our listeners, it would be a very similar situation because I've seen like, uh, like videos of people like driving on like there's, I don't know if it's like a giant roundabout or what, like traffic <laughs> circle, but yeah, there's like the flags all overhead of you mm -hmm. and yeah. just like kind of like at a certain time of day or, or night, depending on the moon, like kind of cast their light down on you. Seems very cool. Um, yeah. I know you, you had a few videos of like these like flag globes that they had. And you, uh, one of them oh, that gosh. sticks out to me was like, you know, don't believe your eyes at first sight because like you had it centered like a French flag. And then as you zoomed out, it was actually, what was it? Thailand. It wasn't, it was, okay. it wasn't the net. It was Thailand. Okay. No, Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. I knew it was Thailand or Costa Rica because they have the same. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was on the um, yeah on the bottom and top there. That's it. Yeah. So it, yeah, there, I mean, there were in Doha there were there were flags everywhere of of all the the national teams that are playing, which is which is fantastic. Um, and they have the um, there's an area where they've got again huge flag poles with all the national flags flying properly anyway, um, uh, overlooking Qatar, uh, overlooking Doha itself. So that was quite fab. And then the everybody who was there pretty much was draped in their own national flag as they were wandering about. And it was it, it, that in itself for me was, right. was quite, that was the thing for me really was, was the, it was these thousands and thousands of people 
probably a little bit more, probably doubling the size of the population of Qatar at the time, um, all just milling about, enjoying themselves. And you could tell where they're from. And it's, uh, but, you know, all just mixing with each other, uh, all there for. Well, you and I could tell where they're from. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. But the, 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 other, the other good thing is, is that it wasn't just the people wondering about weren't just wearing the, the, the national flags of the teams that were playing. There were loads of other different uh, countries that, that weren't even participating that was there. Um, and that was nice to see. So I, I did take my Cyprus flag right. with me. <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I was going to say, you said uh, uh, off air or, you know, before we even even jumped on camera, maybe, that you mm. saw flags from, like, you know, basically all the UN nation. Well, you didn't say that, but you said you saw a lot more flags there than countries that were actually participating. So oh. I'm guessing they just trotted them all out to kind of, I don't know, gin up interest or something. <laughs> Not that the World Cup needs interest. People know yeah. it's happening, but... Yeah, exactly. And the, 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 there was there was some, a lot of normal countries that um, that weren't participating at all, uh, which was which was great. Um, and, and did, yeah, I mean, Libya was one of the flags that I was going. Hold on a minute, I need to follow this guy and <laughs> get his flag. So I've got a video shot of him We're going. Well, I know Libya aren't in the uh, in the finals. Um, so, but yeah, there was there was loads like like that, um, which was great. And and the reason why I'm having the, the Berber flag up because that was the most uh, unique flag that I saw somebody flying while in, in the um, in the crowd. So that's why I've got this up today. That makes yes. sense. And I assume that was mostly from like Moroccan fans, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah, it covers that sort of reach and um, yeah, right across there. So it, it does make sense. But um, I just I, I picked it out going, what's that doing there? But uh, yeah. So it, it was, yeah. it was a flag yeah, it's always amazing to me. Right. It, it's always amazing to me. Like even like, um, more minor, I mean, everything is more minor than the world cup as far as like soccer and football go. But, uh, even like for like smaller football matches, you'll see flags of like, like half of the things posted on like Reddit, like r slash vexillology are like, Hey, what is this flag? I saw it at a football match. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with any of the teams that are playing. So, and somebody will spot it. It'll be like Abkhazia or like Circassia <laughs> or something like, it'll be something wild. Like there were a few Circassian flags uh, in the, in the most recent world or the ongoing world cup, I guess by the time this comes out, it will not be ongoing, but uh, and France will have won. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry about that, by the way, <laughs> I'm sorry that my, I, I have not been watching, but I did see that my France knocked out your England yesterday. So, again, if you're not a huge football fan, then then who cares? Yeah, yeah exactly. But I know flag yeah. session was really rooting for, for England. So, yes, you know, they were. Hats off. Yeah. The, England played great. It's, uh, you know, it's a shame what happened. Harry Kane missing that second PK, like, oh, mm. that was rough yeah. for them, not for me. Not, um, yes. As an adoptive France fan, because I know the U.S. team is, I mean, better this year than they have been in other years, for sure. But not, still not quite up to snuff as far as that goes. We'll get there. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah, I wanted to stay on that topic, like, if we could for just, like, a little bit uh, or a little bit longer. And talk about some of the, because, like, I, I had made a post on Instagram about I was not going to talk about this sporting event because of, human rights things and blah, blah, blah. And again, like, I don't blame anybody who went to it, anybody, anything like that. I do want to say, I, I kind of feel like I have to talk about it because there were a few very flag specific events that came up during it, of which I'm sure, you know, at least two of the ones that I'm going to mention here. The first one being the American team posting, I think it was like, they posted like just a a group table like standings or something like that. And when they posted it, they superimposed like a different flag over Iran's flag, which had the symbol in the middle ripped out and had either the, I think it's the Shahada that's on it uh, at top and bottom. It had that kind of like blurred, which seemed like either just bad Photoshop or something. It was like, they didn't quite all the way blur it, but I was wondering like, so that caused like a little bit of an uproar on Twitter and like online spaces and things like that. But I was wondering like, from somebody who was actually there, 
was that widely talked about or widely noticed or known or what was like kind of on the ground as far as that goes? I don't recall a great hoo-ha on the ground in amongst all the people that was there at the time. Um, I must admit, at the time I was reading mostly Al Jazeera, the news as opposed to any others while we were there, because that seemed to give us the most, mm -hmm. I was to say I'm biased, but I'm not sure. But anyway, um, of, of which they, they picked that up quite quite early on. Um, but yeah, I, understanding the Iranian flag, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not agreeing with the Iranian um, governments and, and the powers that be over there. However, when it comes sure, to... That's yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? And it? But when it comes to somebody's national symbol, playing with it just because you don't like them, and let's face it, the Americans haven't liked the Iranians and vice versa for many decades. Anyway, politics aside, this is the um, first I'm hearing of this, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll cover it another time. But yeah, it's just okay. <laughs> regardless, I think that's it's it, you, you can't just mess somebody's flag just because you just don't like them and then yeah taking out the the middle symbol which um for those that don't know is yeah it's it's the it's the name of Allah it's it's God at the end of the day that that were, that, that was removed um mm -hmm. is you know it, I, I think most countries if that was their central symbol would be a little bit miffed angry upset whichever term you want to use oh, yeah um so if you don't want to use that then maybe find something else to just replace it altogether as opposed to sort of yeah photoshopping and botching it and then causing a hoo-ha instead is is my personal right. thoughts right yeah i was gonna say like you could just use like the outline of the country or something if you if you wanted yeah. to get if you really really for whatever reason and i'm not saying like whether you're right or wrong but in a scenario where you don't want to use the flag but you do want to obviously denote which country it is you could use yeah. an outline of the country. Not that many Americans will know what Iran looks like outlined. <laughs> no. Um, well, just, we just should, considering how many times. Yeah. Or or just the word. Just the word. Just type it out. I-R-A-N. It's yeah. not a long one. So that'd be yeah. pretty easy. But yeah, no, I was curious if there was like much action on the ground, but it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound no, like there was. And I think, no, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, that I think I think people were too high in the spirits of, of uh, you know, of, of, of football and too focused on that as opposed to all the, the politics and letting the governments worry about all the nonsense. Yeah, the that drama that's like yeah, yeah. outside of football itself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense to me. Um, did you see any, the other incident that I wanted to bring up, the only other, like real, well, not the only other, but the main other flag event that I noted was the protester that ran onto the field. I, I honestly forget during which match at this point, but he was carrying a Pache flag, which here in like US media was reported as protester runs on field carrying rainbow flag. And they did not offer any other specifics. Now, like, is it a rainbow flag? Yes, absolutely. And those, from what I am to understand anyway, were being banned or, or not let into venues is maybe a more accurate way of putting it. But yes, a, a, you know, and whatever your politics are on that, like you guys as viewers and listeners know what my politics are on that. But this guy carried in a Pache flag and a flat or uh, was wearing a shirt that had some political slogans on it that I forget. It was like something about then some territory that's currently controlled by some other territory. It wasn't <laughs> Kosovo, I don't think, but it was. No, I, uh, I, 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 adjacent. I think it was the, the, Iran got a mention about, yeah, Iranian women rights was mentioned on there as well. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. But did was there any was there much commotion like on ground level about that, or like did you kind of like have to read that in the news later? Well, yeah, the latter really. They, again, um, I think because it was so. Well, I was about to say isolated, but um, I think because it's a one-off, it was. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I must admit personally, I do wonder how how that individual got the flag through security because when I went and I took my cypress flag in my bag i wasn't wearing it at the time mm -hmm. so they they pulled it out of the bag and went right what's this flag of cypress going oh i don't know about this it's going it's, it's, the, it's cypress what do you mean you don't know about it that got taken away i was going where's, where's my cypress flag gone? really so they, 
they photographed it and this and that. And, and then I, I went up to the guy and go, well, what's the matter with that? He's because we, we, we don't recognize this. I was going, it's a, it's a country. I said, it's where I was born. <laughs> going, no, no, I'm not sure about that. I was going, he said, where is it? I said, it's, it's a little Greek island or Turkish, depending where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, say, say Turkish to them. <laughs> yeah, that's good. it's in the Mediterranean. No, not a clue. But eventually he got a call from his supervisor going, yeah, that one's all right. They, they can have that. So how this... It's, guy yeah. The, the funnier that, thing yeah. would be if they asked you, like... The funnier thing would be to ask you, like, well, what does it look like? And you'd just point to the flag. Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it motherfucker, like it's this. right there. <laughs> it looks like yeah. this. It's got, like, a weird horn out to the east side. <laughs> and, Yeah. <laughs> That would be the only other thing, like, other than, like, the Kosovo flag. Like, yeah, this is what it looks like. (laughs) Yes. Anyway. It's like Kosovo, but smaller. (laughs) Yeah, Mm. in an island. Yes. Not just an island island. from its neighbors, but an actual island. (laughs) Yeah. But I... I, They might have taken more kindly to the North Cyprus flag. Yeah, now, which, interestingly enough, um, was flying in their flag promenade, the Northern Cyprus flag. Um, flag so they're they're sorry i'm digressing interesting um, the air yeah, so they this promenade no, is, we both um, it is it's nothing to do with the football it was um it's an area where they built uh especially to fly flags of all the embassies that are based in in doha which i interestingly went that's northern cyprus there sitting alongside well not well, it wasn't right. alongside, but close to the normal Cypriot flag. Which I was thinking, that's, that's an interesting one. So there is another country that recognizes the northern territories of Cyprus. But there we go. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Well, did you have any other, um, like, flag stories from the sporting event? Or... I, I don't think... No, I, 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 yeah, I jumped ahead of myself, really, because, yeah, apart from, as I said, seeing lots of countries outside of the um the world cup being branded about um it was just nice to see and i suppose the last noticeable flag that's that wasn't participating is the palestinian flag which has had huge press and was everywhere every game yes. that we went to it, everywhere we went was the palestinian flag which uh, uh was an interesting point but again nobody was making it a big issue of it they were either wearing it or flying it but nobody was demonstrating about it it was just there subtly in the background and all the authorities the police and the private security teams that were standing about didn't get involved in it just stood back let it happen nobody was really up in arms about anything and just let it carry on which was which was great that's how it should be really yeah i plus i mean i wouldn't imagine like just from again don't have to go too much into politics but i wouldn't imagine they would have too much of a problem with that one in cutter so that that yeah. largely makes sense. I have seen the uh, Moroccan team, which is the I think, I think I read where they are the furthest advanced, uh, like furthest, having advanced the furthest into the World Cup of any yeah. Arabic team maybe ever. I think it. Was, and so it, I yeah. think a lot of the a lot of that part of the world is just is Morocco fans right now. Yes. So for them to be yeah. holding up the Palestinian flag is. I mean, in front of a larger audience, I think is very cool. I, and yeah, just some final questions on that. I guess we can kind of roll these into one, but what is the first flag you ever bought? And then what is your favorite flag? All right. So the the first one uh, that I bought uh, links into what I was saying earlier, which was uh, the Cyprus flag. Um, I got that quite a long time mm-hmm. ago. Um, so uh, being a, a, a proud Cypriot, not that I can probably really claim that. But um, that was what uh, was the beginning of my first collection. Um, it's not my favorite flag, I must admit, but obviously it's got a special place in my yeah. heart that I, I need to, need to I, I can't not have that. So that, that's why I got that first. But y- yeah, there isn't, there, there's something not brilliant about the Cyprus flag. It's not the, the gold of the Cypriot Island against white background. It's not. It doesn't differentiate enough for me. Um, so, uh, but, but overall, right. it, yeah, it's part it doesn't of the like stand out as much. No, no, that's and I, and I think yeah, it, for sure. But I, I get why it was there. I mean, it, they obviously designed it in a way n- to completely ignore Greece and Greeks 
uh, Greece's flag and they try and completely ignore Turkey as well. Um, that's why there's no blue. That's why there's no red in it at all. They wanted to steer clear all of that to come up with some neutral cards. So I get it. I just, just, just misses the mark for me, that one. Right. So if that one misses the mark, what is your favorite one? Well, yeah. so my favorite, and I still don't know to this day why, it's the flag of Norway. It's just such a simplistic, beautiful Nordic cross flag that I just love it. I love it when it's flying. I, I just love the, the, the graphics. Of, well, I, um, even to the point where I've made friends with a, a guy uh, in Norway who um, has got an a Instagram page who, who flies his flag all the time. So him and I have got chatting as well over it. Um, Oddly enough, he has a strong passion being in Norway for the Norwegian flag, and rightly so. Um, but yeah, I just I I can't quite put my finger on on why that works so well. Uh, the Nordic flags are good, as you know, uh, as, as from your side as well. But I, yeah, that that to me, the national flags that trumps all of them so far. Yeah, no, I agree with you largely. Like I, I love, as you've seen on my, you know, Instagram page and things like that. I love the Nordic cross flags of which I think Norway is probably my favorite, if not second favorite. I, I do. I will say like, I slightly prefer the Orkney Island flag, mm -hmm. which for listeners, like it's, it's basically the Norway flag. The red and the blue are somewhat different. They're like a little bit, I would say, just like lighter to put it in a in easy terms. Mm -hmm. And then instead of the white fin variation around the blue, it's got a yellow, like a gold. Um, and then, like I said, yeah, the the color tones are slightly different. But other than that, it's it's really very very similar. And for some reason, for me, maybe it's living in the U.S. and I have a I don't know a thing about red, white, and blue flags that aren't my own or something. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I prefer the the red, white, or the red, yellow, and blue, I guess, of the Orkney one. Mm -hmm. But I do love, like, you and I are, are lockstep on that. We love the Scandinavian cross flags, for sure. Yeah. And, like, Absolutely. I'm sure you saw, I had a video up, yeah, on, like, uh, World Vexillology Day of all the Scandinavian crosses that were, like, kind of around my porch and everything. Yeah. And you you commented and liked it. And, uh, and it's very cool, like, um, I don't know if this was your comment exactly, but some people did comment like it's very cool to see like kind of the uniformity in them while being yep. different like it's like yeah. yes they all kind of adapt to this thing but in mm. their own way and yes. in their own colors and, and and that's that's why i love yeah the, the nordic cross and i know a lot of people do and I, I think you're right it's because they can um the the design is so simplistic yet there seems that they can do so much with it um which i think is which breaks them all up, not just the national countries, but yeah, Shetlands and various others as well, all seem to do it. And that, I think, um, in a larger scale, is is another reason why I think I like flags so much, because I can never, again, pinpoint exactly why I love flags so much. But I think this sure, point yeah. that every country across the globe has decided that they need a national symbol in the form of a flag is, you know, nobody's agreed that unilaterally that's what we're all going to do it's no we'll have this we'll have that and everybody's coming and i right. and i just i just love that that that's that's as, as a globe regardless of their political backgrounds everybody's decided that yes we will have a national symbol and it will be a flag name me a country that doesn't have one and i, I think it's i think that that in itself is what really drives me into loving flags as a whole yeah. Yeah. No, I, I cannot think of a country that doesn't have one. And yeah, we were talking off air about like, uh, I mean, pretty much exactly what you just said about every country just kind of unilaterally. Mm. Well, not even unilater unilaterally, but like <laughs> every country decided like, okay, these countries have flags. We need to have a flag. Here's our, yeah. what are some symbols we can pull from some colors we can pull from things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing we talked off air about is like, yeah, the various like, like how cool the the Nordic crosses, like the Scandinavian cross flags are. There's also like, you know, Pan-African flags, Pan-Arab yeah. flags. Um, yeah. yeah, like Yugoslav, like um, former Yugoslav. Like I went over that in, I think, season f or episode four, I think it was with Nick. Uh, 101 episode or 101 questions about Dalmatia. 
That's what it was called. Right. And we went into, yeah, the pan Yugoslav colors. And then, yeah. And on the first one also with Nick, we went into the, the Nordic crosses, like the Scandinavian crosses mm. ones. And I didn't even get to cover all of those as much as I would have liked to, because there's so many, mm. but it's interesting. Like you said, to see all these countries kind of deciding, yes, we need a symbol. Yes. We need a, a let's put it on a flag. Yeah. And what are other folks doing? Like other folks that maybe have similar histories to us, what can we kind of like learn from that and design from that? So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, good to get your, your favorite and your take on all that. Yeah. And I think it's cool now if we try kind of, uh, yeah, transition into the middle part of the show okay. where we are going to get each other to guess certain flags. <laughs> and I have got, I won the coin toss. So I am going to <laughs> do the first one here. And Tareth is going to guess just from Vex terms what flag I am describing. All right. So are you ready? No. <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> ready as you can be. All right. So in Vex terms, this one is described thusly. And I love using thusly because when else do I get to use that word? It's so underused. Anyway. Right. Exactly. So described thusly. This one is uh, Argent, a cross in Scandinavian form, surmounted by a saltier sable, charged at the center point with an eight-pointed star or O-R. Oh. Any right. ideas on what that may be? So it obviously has a Scandinavian, a Scandinavian link, which is nice. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Run that slightly through me again then because that's <laughs> what i should probably know yeah no yeah for the listeners <laughs> and and viewers as well yes so it's argent which for the listener means white in this context anyway a cross in scandinavian form surmounted by a saltier sable it's worth mentioning that the scandinavian cross is also sable which black for the listeners Charged at the center point with an eight-pointed star or, which for the listeners is gold. Why can't they say gold? <laughs> Why can't I say And black? I think I think <laughs> you know this one. I should do. Yeah. Um, and I... It, it, it'll be a UK county one, won't it? Because... It is. It is north, north. but also southern at the same time. North... It's a Scotland one. It's it's the one that you've now got because it of is me. A, it is a Scotland <laughs> one. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's one that you sent me. Yes, yes it is. It is. And so, so yeah, I know I'll, it. So the best hint that I can give you it is is that it is northern, but it is a it's southern southern. land. Oh, I know this one. This will be Sutherland, won't it? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this is the flag of Sutherland, which is a county in Scotland. I don't know if it's a historical county, a whatever county. You guys have so many different kinds of counties there in the UK. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. But this one I do actually have, again, since you sent it to me, <laughs> uh, I have it physically, which, thank God, because this is, I think... Probably my favorite. I know I said Orkney before, but I think this may overall be my favorite flag. And I'm going to hold it up now on screen for the viewers. It, it is a good design. Look at that. It's so simple, eye-catching, and distinctive. I do like it. Right, exactly. Even if I it's, can't remember where it's from. It's To me, it's like... <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> To me, it's it's a rare example of trying to do everything at once and actually succeeding. Well, yes. Because a lot of flags, I think, try to do so many things at Too once. Much. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, there's stars here. There's the crescent moon here. There's this for that, this for that. And yeah. they end up just being utterly like too complicated. Corrupted. This one, mm. to me, nails it. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally yeah, agree cluttered is, is like the best way that I would put it. <laughs> And so, yeah, so this flag also has a pretty interesting history just in the way that it, like, came about at all. Mm -hmm. So what they did in Sutherland was they had a flag redesign competition or a flag design competition. I'm not 
entirely aware if they had one in the first place or not. But what they did originally was they got the, let me see, what was he called? The Lord something. Uh, I've got it somewhere here. Okay, yes. They originally chose a flag that had a hawk or an eagle. I think it's a hawk. Uh, yeah, it's like a, yeah, yeah, based on this, it's a hawk. Oh, no. Swooping eagle. I don't know. Whatever. It's a bird of prey. It's a <laughs> it's raptor. A bird. And it is going directly at the... A bird of prey. <laughs> and it's coming directly at the viewer, like head on. And it is red and white, like fimbriated. So, like, the left part of the bird is yellow. The right part of the bird, as you're looking at it anyway, is red. And then that's counterchanged with the colors of the actual field on the flag yeah. so that they read red to the ho hoist side and then yellow to the fly. And then there are three yellow five-pointed stars on the hoist. And originally, Sutherland had decided, okay, we've done a competition. That's going to be our new flag, right? Yep. And people revolted. Because people were looking at this, and one of their critiques, one of their criticisms, was that this looks too communist because <laughs> of the colors, I think, the red and the yellow. Yeah. Okay. And the star, like the five-pointed stars being on the, uh, the hoist side, they're like, well, this just looks like Chinese or something, but like sort of fitted to us, but not really. Yes. And so they were like, all right. Sutherland Council was like, okay. So... We're going to have to maybe redo this competition because originally they had said like, all right, we don't have the money. We don't have the, you know, public funds, whatever mm. to do an entire competition and get everyone in Sutherland to vote. Yeah. So they put it to the, was it the Lord Lieutenant? And, and I have a note for this actually, because somebody <laughs> English clearly wrote this, but um, somebody English wrote that the Herald today features a controversy over a flag design officially proposed for the former county of Sutherland, former county being the keywords. Yeah. It was chosen by a panel convened by the Lord Lieutenant. And then in parentheses, they put, I am not sure how one can appoint a Lord Lieutenant of a county that no longer exists, <laughs> but that is the British constitution for you. <laughs> I think it sums up nicely. And approved by the Lord Lion <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that sums up a lot of things nicely. <laughs> um, and approved by the Lord Lion, L-Y-O-N, <coughs> excuse me, King of Arms, but has been heavily criticized and the decision is now on hold. And that's past information. It's no longer sure. on hold. They've chosen the one that I showed, Tareth. But yeah, so <laughs> enough people got up in arms, uh, no pun intended, that... They were like, hey, we don't love this. It looks a little communist in our eyes. And why weren't we consulted on it kind of thing? So the county of Sutherland or whatever, the former county of Sutherland, yeah. I guess, said, oh, hey, all that money that we couldn't find to actually put out a public vote for like the first round of voting on this, we suddenly found it. We suddenly <laughs> found it in a drawer down here. <laughs> yes. Never and um, <laughs> and now that we have the money, uh, we actually do have the money, it turns out, to put ballots in everyone's mailbox or, you know, post box, whatever yeah. you call it over there. And did you call it a post box? I am curious. Okay. call it a post box, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and they were like, all right, we suddenly <laughs> magically found the money. We are going to vote on it with the entire populace. And the populace voted... And that, that eagle one that I told you about, it was in the running. It was in the final four. But they ended up settling on this one that, like I said, is yeah. my favorite. Absolutely. It is so pretty. It's I mean, for one, like you and I, I'm preaching in the choir here, but mm -hmm. we love a Nordic cross. Yep. This one's a pretty plain one if you were to just strip it down to that. Mm -hmm. uh, black Nordic cross on a white field. But then we have a black salt here, which harkens back to... And I know you have one got, yes. ready as well. Oh, yes. St. Andrew's flag here. Yeah. Which is, yeah, yeah, the official flag of Scotland. <laughs> so it's got a Nordic cross for the times when they were controlled by Scandinavia, like Vikings, to put it plainly, I guess. And then it's got the salt here to represent Scotland because they're both. And yeah. then it's got the, like, eight-pointed star in the middle that's supposed to represent the sun, which... 
it's confusing. Like you read the thing, like the official thing, and it's like uh, it represents like the sun being in the south because we're so high north, you know, like uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Longitude wise, or I think longitude, yeah, or latitude, whatever, one of those, and. You know, it also represents the sun rising in the east and setting in the west, and it's like, all right, so it just represents the sun, like <laughs> in all of yeah. its phases, and, like, and what it does, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and what it naturally does. So it's like, yeah, you can't. So it's in the south, but also the east, but also the west. Okay, sure, it's the sun. It does sun things, but they put it right there in the middle, and like they importantly, I think in my in my view anyway, they didn't have it go like its edges don't go all the way to the white there is a little bit of black in the middle and i think that's important as an almost like kind of fimbriation type style wise thing where yeah where it doesn't quite touch but yeah i mean this one won me over the first time i saw it and when tarith and i for the listeners when tarith and i were doing a flag swap a few months ago i was like i have to have this one if you can get it or if you already have it, whatever, send it to me. It will be the first one I fly. It'll probably be the one I fly the most often. Get it to me. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. As you've seen. It's it's a good design. What I <laughs> what I like I've never noticed actually, you're right, about the, the points of the, the sun. I don't quite meet the white. I've not I've not noticed that before. That's a good point. Um Yeah, but, it, it's just something that I kind of notice on like my third pass of looking at it, really. Is right, that they're yeah. so close to hitting it, mm. but they don't quite. No, nope. and I don't know if that's important from like a design standpoint or not. Well, like, I mean, I mean it, I've got it like right here. I don't know if the viewer can see, but like, yeah, see, only they almost quite. touch. They don't but quite. I wonder, yeah, I wonder whether that's because, um, harking back to an earlier conversation, because we know that gold on white doesn't quite do it. Does it? <laughs> so. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> as you as Tarith has for the listeners and not viewers, Tarith uh, just put up a uh, Cyprus flag, which yes has the gold outline of the island of Cyprus, just on a white background. And yeah, at a distance, it's hard to tell. But yeah, I think I mean that's got to be part of the reason that they did it, just from a yeah. design standpoint. But no, I think that's anyway. Yeah, yeah that, no, that one is I think like hands down my favorite flag. Mm -hmm. probably in the world. Um, and it's because of the things that I just said is you and I both know we love Scandinavian crosses. I love the saltier that's like overlaid on it. And then the sun in the middle, I would honestly love it if it didn't have that too, but I love it more that it does. And, um, yeah, that one's got yeah, a special I, place in my, in my yeah. heart and my flagpole. I think yeah, I'm just trying to imagine it without the sun, but yeah, I think it would still look good, but I think the sun finishes it off nicely. The sun really does do it, yeah. Because yeah. it's almost like a negative space type thing, except in yeah. a different color. Yes. But yeah, like yeah. yellow, like as vexillologists know, like um, yellow and white are gold and silver in her heraldry. Yeah. And they're not the same, but they're they're close. Close, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, that's my first yep. one. I uh, I understand you've got one to show me. Yes, or to right. quiz me about. So out of out of the ones that I've got, I think this is the only one I've managed to get the heldric, which is always a word that I stumble with, a bit like vexillological. Um, it's the only one I think I can. Oh my find god! Don't even. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Get me started. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, you're right with Beck's heads. I think that sticks with it. Anyway, so this, I'm going to read this out because I think this, <laughs> yeah, you're right. The way that um, the, the, the official wording on some of these flags is just, uh, it's almost poetry in motion. So uh, my first flag up is as follows. It's a quarterly oar and ghouls a fez wavy barry way of four argent and azure surmounted by a pale sabre charged with three escallops of the third and i like escallops of the third escallops of the third it's a great term i love that okay right um okay all right i think i know i think i know which one this is like visually but i don't think i know like where it's from okay 
Uh, oh god, I know exactly what it looks like. Hold on, give me because where it's from sort of gives you the name. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So that's a clue. No, I can picture it in my head because I, I'm pretty sure that this is one that James from uh, Fimo Flags of the World. Yeah. Yes. Who does like yeah? Who does all the the clay flags? Yes. Which is his second shout out in as many weeks or as many episodes anyway. Uh, I know this is one that he has done recently. And it's if, if I, I'm not I mistaken, it's one it, that yeah. they've... Right. If I'm not mistaken, it's one that they've changed recently to make basically like... There was like a white on yellow that they wanted to make like the white on red or something. Yes. Uh, that flag is this one. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I am embarrassed that I had to look it up. <laughs> the name of it so don't count me as getting this one right but this is bedfordshire i'm pretty sure yes spot on yes well okay done. That was, okay that was a good okay. excellent guess <laughs> so i knew what it looked like all right yes. i'll give myself a half point on that one a bit like my half point for uh, sutherland <laughs> yeah yeah honestly all right so yeah tie game tie ball game right now <laughs> there we go <laughs> Yes, you're right. This it's a fairly... okay. So this is Bedfordshire. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, it, you're right. It's, it's it's so the current flag um is from 2014. So only eight years old at the moment. Um, and you're right. So it, it's based on the the county council's uh, coat of arms, which was a very similar design, um, except as you say, the the, the blue and the white of the river which is the Great River Ooze, by the way, which runs through the heart of Bedford, which is a brilliant name for a river. Ooze. Wait, Ooze. how are we spelling that? Uh, uh, O-U-S-E. Ooze. As opposed to another way. of like the Okay. Ninja Turtles way of spelling it. I was going to say, as opposed to, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. That's, yes. Similar okay. sounding, right. different spelling, but yes. <laughs> Anyway, no, teach us the secrets of the ooze. Let's go. So the, the secrets of the ooze are as follows. So, yeah, the um, the coat of arms uh, was, um, as I say, issued to the, the, the council. So, yeah, the, the river, white and blue, so that it ended up with the white being next to the yellow. So we're back to yellow and white or gold and silver um, again. So we're back to the, the, the same issue with, with Cyprus and Sutherland, that it didn't quite look right. right. So when they redesigned it as a flag, getting rid of all the coat of arms, then they just simply swapped the blue and the white over, which uh, frames it much better. Um, okay, the, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but the, the, and they obviously got rid of the whole nonsense behind the coat of arms with the, the lions and the bull and swans because you know that's what we do here in the uk you just make it all tarty and busy um <laughs> no well you know why not someone's obviously got far too much time on their hands <laughs> to come up with these sorts of things but the the the, the design so the blue sure. and the, the blue and the red comes from the uh, the arms of the bouchamps the barons of bedford that was their coat of arms um and the the escallops, the shells, uh, come from the Duke of Bedford's coat of arms, and they've been mashed together to get the coat of arms, to which now is the flag. Um, but anybody who doesn't know the UK very well will, will uh, be interested to know that, that Bedfordshire is probably the furthest point from the coast of the UK, and therefore we stick shells on our flag. <laughs> So they, Interesting. there we go. Oh, wait, yes. so Bedfordshire is where you're from, you say? Okay, so that's, yeah. yeah, it's my home county, and yes. So the shells are just kind of yeah. there? Like, are there well, shells in the riverbed? Do, well, and is probably, riverbed where bed? It's, um, no, can't be, I, you I'm, said. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure where the bed comes from. The ford comes from the, the river crossing, fords. Um, of which a lot of yeah. Sorry, that was like count. nine questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm on number four at the moment. So. <laughs> Answer all of them. <laughs> yes, uh, the bed. I don't know where that comes from. I have a. St it might be from okay, uh, okay. The, the Beauchamps. It might be a, a breakdown back to that. But then they were barons of Bedford, so it obviously harks back from that. But uh, yeah, this is terrible. I live in Bedford or sure. around that area, and I I couldn't tell you where the word bed comes from for Bedford, but it does. Um, but yeah, yeah, so it's an amalgamation of those two that, that come up with uh, what we have flying today. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that one. I think that may be on my next list of if you want to do another flag swap, 
Hit me up. I know I sent you Alaska, New Mexico, and Ohio last time. Yes. All of which, yeah, you, 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 you picked well in my book anyway. Um, as far as US state flags, because they can get pretty miserable at a certain level. Maybe. Yes. But uh, yeah, if you want to do another flag swap, I would definitely take Bedfordshire. This is not one that I think was on my radar when we were talking about it, as not much as like, know. you know, Sutherland obviously was. Yeah, but yeah. it is one on my radar now. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I've seen Flag Session flying this one or having yeah. this one in their background. Yes, they do have that one so, now. Yeah. <laughs> I knew because I another, said, yes, that was another yeah, flag swap that we did. <laughs> yes. I can't imagine many people sending out the flag of also, yeah. year across the world. But Probably yes. not. But I, yeah, I, another I free have, shout out there. Yeah, <laughs> I may have bought out a, a few extra Bedfordshire ones ready and waiting for a few, um, uh, yes, flag swaps in the future. So, yes. Okay, okay. Ready so, to go. So, yeah, I'll, I'll try and be a part of that. <laughs> All right, so... Okay. I will go ahead and move on to my second one. Right. And, oh, I was going to pick it up. That was a dumb move. <laughs> what I need to do is find the tab I have it open in. I mean, I guess I could just show you, but more interesting. So this one was a uh, harder one to find the oh, gosh. vex terms for. And I may have to actually omit a couple words here because they may actually have to do with the location in question. But... Okay. Okay. Mm, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, man, I'm gonna have to pick out a few words here, but I'll do it like this. So, the flag shows the the cross of Saint George, the historic symbol of England, with the vertical band off center to the left, in the format adopted by most Scandinavian countries. This reflects murmurs Anglo-Scandinavian heritage the county having been settled and ruled by Norwegians and Danes in the 8th and 9th centuries, as well as focusing the design on the hoist. And I've probably already said too much. <laughs> Placed at the center of the cross is the traditional white rose of so-and-so, in use since the 14th century, shown against a blazing sun, a heraldic combination known as a rose en soleil, the same combination of Roson Soleil device and red and white colors appeared in the arms of the former so-and-so council of 1889 to 1974. Do you have any idea what this could be? Well, the trouble is... Did that was... make any sense to anybody? <laughs> Not just you, but a listener as well. You see, the problem is I... I after ignoring I swear I had else. found a better way to describe that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've picked up on the white rose and I've stuck with it, and now I'm stuck with Yorkshire. Okay, you're on to something. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, you're on to it. Right. Yeah, but it's more than Yorkshire, what you've got, though. York, city of York? It is more than... No. <laughs> so what do you do when you're on a horse? <laughs> Maybe the worst way I've ever put anything. Apart from like, I don't know, drink, hang out. Oh, um, yeah. uh, <clears throat> yes, apart from ride, wedding it? Riding, yes. Ah, uh, right, yes. It's, um, North Riding. Is it? North Riding flag? Uh, Yorkshire North Riding. No. Not, not north. Where are we going then? East? It's or not we north. Go west? <laughs> I don't South. know which, I was going to say, I don't know which way <laughs> it's going to show up on camera, but it's, uh. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> See, I don't know if this is west on camera, if this is right or left oh, on camera, because it's opposite. Right. It's it's what it's it's one of In the any great case, Yorkshire uh, west. What I will do, west. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say what I'll do <laughs> is I'll uh, copy and paste it into our chat here. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, that was way more stressful than I meant it to be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had. I swear to God, I had a tab up here with a less stressful way to describe it. But the one that Stress I was describing it from was the, was from the Flag Institute there in the UK. They are. And it kept saying the word Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire. And I was like, well, I got to leave that word out. Yes. Because you'll know. <laughs> it's like a well, third of what it is. <laughs> but, but yes, they're all in any case, geographically together. 
Yes. So in yeah. any case, for the uh, for the YouTube viewers, for the faithful, <laughs> I have got a physical version of this that I got again from Mr. Flag. I am just giving out plugs in this episode. <laughs> Sponsored by. It is this. Okay, busy. Yes. Except that obviously, yeah, that side goes a bit longer. It's it's another yeah Nordic. And cross, as I as mentioned, said. it. Yes, and as I mentioned, it is based on St. George's Cross, which I also have. Oh, that's Austria. I guess I picked out the wrong flag earlier. That's Austria. <laughs> that is straight up Austria. <laughs> anyway, I have a St. George's Cross. I have one here on my wall that's like in a mini. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we'll just leave that blooper in. <laughs> the St. George's Cross, yeah, I was going to say you may have one near you, but... I, I I've, the closest I've got. Oh, that's <laughs> that, that's not even that doesn't even help because it's that's it's, it's Australia, but it's in there. <laughs> yeah, it's in there. If you if you just take that just red part, room. that's it. That's better. <laughs> if you just take that red part and the white outline of it, but pretend that the white outline of it goes all the bigger. way. <laughs> if I make it, just there we go. Anyway. <laughs> Viewers will have seen it by now, but listeners will be more confused than they have ever been in their <laughs> entire lives. Um, look up St. George's Cross. It is the English flag. We are fortunate enough that the sporting event is going on right now. So if you've seen English fans, you've seen them waving just the English flag, not the entire, like, uh, what we call the Union Jack, Union like the Jack, Union yeah. flag. Um, so you'll have seen that. But anyway, this is that, but the like vertical picture, the up and down one goes a little bit more toward the ho hoist side, the, uh, the side that you would fly it from. Yep. And then in the middle of that is a blazing sun with a five petaled uh, white rose that's from, I, I gather, is a historic symbol of Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you, I mean, aside from even, you know, <laughs> finally guessing it. Like, if you had any insights, because I've, I've read a little bit up on this flag, but if you had any insights into, like, what are the writings of Yorkshire? I'm, I'm curious, because I, I kind of looked this up, but not really. Um, what, what's a writing in British, like, <laughs> you're, you're asking speak? A British person that. <laughs> um, that is a very good question, what a writing is. Um it's uh is it like uh, a very old like archaic i think it is yeah there's um he says trying to remember because there's but there isn't a north south east and west that's too simple um i think there's only three of them uh yeah uh, which, there's a north east west, and west. west there's no yeah, south there's no south that's it <laughs> um yeah he said, i did look yeah. that up there is but they're, yeah they're just areas of, of yorkshire uh, the part of the the Yorkshire Dales, which are a big open mountains, uh, not open mountains is the wrong words. They're quite a hilly um, area, like the hills. Yorkshire, yeah, yeah. The Yorkshire Dales are, are, are what make Yorkshire famous, if that was right British terminology. Um, and I know the ridings make up most of that sort of area. I think if I've got that right. But I, yeah, what what makes a riding a riding? Um, is is a. I is wondered a if it was question. like. Because I, I think even in like the US and I am failing to think of one right now, but like I feel like a riding maybe is like how far you could ride your horse in a day or some shit like that. <laughs> well, and I could be totally be wrong. Um, I'm trying like, to. I, I feel like. Oh, it's an it's here we go. It's an old Norse word riding for pride oh, like riding or something meaning thriding. I've now got to look at what thriding means. To understand what that means, uh, well, um, but it's old Norse. This will be on the Patreon or something. Yeah, won't it just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever a thrid, triding mount. So, oh, I don't know. It's it, it's. I mean, I like your. We'll figure thought. it out. I like your idea of it, how long it takes to ride a horse to a certain location. How That's far can riding. you ride in one day? <laughs> From your when the horse yeah. when the horse stops, I that's don't know the boundary. <laughs> right, exactly. It's like Oregon Trail or something. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> no, I don't Do know. You, on so, one. is this one that you're like? No, all good, all good. <laughs> is this one that you're any any sort of way familiar with? Like, oh, do yeah. you see this one ever? I mean, I imagine not where you live, but yeah, not where I live. No, I. I 
I'm aware of it. Yes, um, it's it, it's not a favourite of mine because I just find the whole white rose piece a little busy. Um, and then you've got the yeah, because you've got the white roses of Yorkshire, and then you've got the red roses of mm, the other side of the county uh, uh, at the time, and hence the War of the Roses. So there's history there. So I get what it's what you know where it all Lancashire. Comes from. Or... Yes, that's it. Yes, because. Blackpool, I think, yeah. is part of Lancashire. That's it. Gosh, yeah, I know some me. history. Yeah, um, so it all links back to that. But I just find that, that both Lancashire and, and Yorkshire's roses um, just just a bit too detailed for my liking. Um, and then, so yeah, the yeah. one that you've as got as far there, as like hair, it's it's yeah. just busy, too busy for my liking. It, it is. As far as like heraldry goes, I, I think I would, I would be fine with it on a crest on a flag. I definitely agree that it's a little involved especially if we're going by like good flag bad flag rules of like yes. can a child reproduce this yeah a child could like fairly easily represent like a yeah, rose yeah. and yeah. a sun um counting the sun's points and counting the roses petals is a little more involved yeah but yeah so i mean you can see what i've done here i've i've gone with one that's a hybrid of scandinavian and scottish culture and then i've gone with one that's a hybrid of scandinavian and english culture so Liking where you're going with that. Your guess is, uh, yeah, your guess is as good as mine on whatever third one I pull. But before we get to my third one, let's get to your second. Okay. So now I couldn't find the Heldrick, beautiful word, um, term on this one, but I, I will describe a way anyway. So the, the, the entire body of the flag is, uh, again, blue and white, wavy lines um, for a river. So if you can imagine that right across the entire flag. And in the middle, they have a yellow shield, which takes up pretty much sort of half um, the flag in the middle there. And sitting in that yellow flag, uh, yellow shield, sorry, is uh, what's called, um, well, I'll call it a deer, because I think if I give it its proper name, then that might start to give off what this, this flag might be linked to. Uh, and, the, and the deer is, is laying down, if that makes any difference. I don't think it does to be fair it probably just means it can fit inside the shield because otherwise if it was standing its head would be cut off okay so this is an an english county right it is an english county yes i mean that's my guess i'm not you you haven't said that but yeah no. okay uh, yep and yes i missed that bit <laughs> uh okay Oh my god. I so I looked up a lot of English county ones earlier today in preparation for this episode. And I think I even looked this one up specifically because I was looking up I don't remember what brand of thing I was looking up, but can you okay, can you give me I know you said it would give it away, but yes. I think I'm to the point of kind of okay. grasping here at straws. So um what is the name of the deer? So the name of the deer is a heart. Okay, so it's Hertfordshire. There you go, yeah. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. In one. <laughs> Damn it. Yes. I wish I didn't have to tell you to do that. But I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on. It's, uh, I'll take yes. it. No, oh, no, that's the wrong thing. I'm, I must have... I've got a picture of it. I will send it over. Uh, where okay. is it? Where is it? I you barely even have to. I know exactly what this motherfucker okay. looks like. <laughs> I swear. I yeah. swear I know this one. I'm oh, mad at myself for missing that. That's all right. It's all good. I there, was less mad at myself for missing Chelya Bent's last episode. <laughs> because I was never gonna get yes, uh, yeah, I saw this one earlier today. Yes. I, I can't we... even remember why, but I did search for it specifically. Oh, I know why. Because I was looking up the difference between the flags of, well, the way that I would pronounce them anyway, being Herefordshire and Hertfordshire, which I know you yeah. would pronounce both differently. But <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, so I know I know the flag of Herefordshire because that's, uh, Dave and Tracy went over that with me yeah. two weeks ago. Yes. And I was like, but what is the one from Hertfordshire? And I looked it up and I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, it's that one. All right. <laughs> I could not remember. Yes. 
Yeah, it's all um, right. So now that I'm good and mad, tell me the history of this one. <laughs> so yeah, again, this is a, a fairly. Um, it's a fairly like many of them, a fairly new flag. Although this is 2008, but so you know, still this this century. Um, but it's yeah. Uh, it's it came of a again of a, of a banner of arms design overall. And, but obviously the, the heart is is why Hertfordshire has its name. The, this this uh, young male deer uh, that, that the county right. has, and the the yellow of the shield that it sits in is the shield of St Albans, uh, which sits uh, oddly enough in Hertfordshire, um, the, the town. And St Albans was the patron saint. Uh, of Hertfordshire and was also the first British martyr as well so uh, for which his traditional colour was um, a yellow cross oh. on a blue background if I remember if I've got that right um, so that the current flag obviously incorporates not only the blue which just happens to be with the river um, which I cannot remember the name of the river at the moment um, something tells me it might even be the river heart but that's that would just be crazy um too easy right yeah 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 surely not uh <laughs> and then the um yes and then obviously the yellow is is, is making up the shield and then yeah the, the heart laying down there it's um it's it is what it is it's it's that simple and yes the the blue and white wavy line is obviously the the river again that runs through um pretty much most of Hertfordshire itself and i think it is the river heart um so is so a heart like a a breed of deer or like is that like a word for a buck of a certain breed of deer or if i remember rightly yeah the 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 heart is um i want to say it's a young male if i recall oh okay um, yes i yeah i did not know that okay gotcha yeah yeah so, yeah i didn't know how how uh specific that got or whatever yeah I mean, so, um, all, all I needed was for you to say heart to get it just on words. But like, as far as like, if I were to, if you were to say, Hey, what kind of deer is this? You could give me a year and I would not know. Oh gosh. No, <laughs> no. even I'm yes. Not that good, but it's, yeah. It took me a while to actually understand that the heart is not spelt like a human heart. It's, it's the same, but without an A, which took yeah. me a long while to understand that one. Um, it's I interesting in like, years. right. Well, Yeah. And like going back to like, or not going back to, but going to, I don't know if you're a Game of Thrones fan at all, but like yes. the, okay. So yeah. So like the, I think it's Renly that has the like burning heart, like H E A R T, but with a stag's head in it, which looks an awful lot like this. Mm. So it's almost kind of like, I'm not saying they did that on purpose, but like heart, heart, like a yeah. heart in a heart. Uh, that would be quite fire, cool. Which, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of like the the general gist of, I guess, like how heraldric it is makes me think of that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, all right. But uh, yeah, so but the, the the reason I went for that one um, is because I have to fly that one every time my mother turns up. It's a bit like the Queen. So uh, yeah, the Hertfordshire. Ah, okay. That's that's where she's from. So, Whenever uh, she's in residence, you have to have that one. Have the Hertfordshire flag flying. Yes. Right. No, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I will get to my third one if we are done with Hertfordshire. Yes, here. I think we're done with Hertfordshire because I and know my... that I've, I've got the the River Hart wrong. That's it's not that, but I, I couldn't tell you which river it's represented because I think there's a lot of them in Hertfordshire. So I'm sure well, it, your listener or viewer would probably be able to add what that's all linked to. I don't think there's any way to know. <laughs> um, and but. Oh man, I had a pun before that, but it's okay. Oh, now. I'm sorry. You were all uh, anyway. If I think of it, no, I'll put it in post. <laughs> I'm just I won't. Um, oh yeah, no. What I oh I remember what it was. It was my literal heartbreak over not getting Hartford cheer. Anyway, it wasn't good, but it was there. Boom. boom. So <laughs> there's another one. Boom, boom. That said, That's I'm going to move hearts. on to. Yeah, I'm going to move on uh, to my third one well, here. It's probably best. And yes, I think so. For for everyone involved, <laughs> the design on this one, and you can I, I kind of like briefed you on my theme so far, but the design on this one is a red field with the white central cross that extends to the edges of the flag, superimposed on a green diagonal cross that extends to the corners of the flag. Okay. 
Yes. Oh. Okay, am, am I right in thinking this isn't a UK county flag now? Have we moved You're away from You're correct in thinking that. I have. Right. So this to me is the in alternative. In geography. Yes. Okay. But this to me is, uh, are we on sort of the an alternative union flag type of style? Type of As style. Would, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes. For sure. Yeah, it's yeah, that, absolutely. Yes. Oh, God. And therefore, I will say it is not the official flag of any government entity. No, but it, but we're still talking about regional flags, though, aren't we? Just not in the UK. And if it's what mm -hmm. I think it is, um, mm -hmm. we are in um, still in Europe. It would it's not France, it's Spain. It's Spain, and therefore must be. Is it Spain? It's the north, and therefore it's the Basque flag. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> You got it. And I'm going to insert a much better <laughs> audio file than me oh, going. Brr, 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 brr. That worked for me. You know what? I have a few in here. <laughs> oh, that one goes on for... That one goes on entirely too long, apparently. No, I like the cut. It was like 36 cut. seconds of cheering. I don't think, well, it, yeah, it was required, yeah. I'm sure. No, I'm not cutting any of this. This is all gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it is the Basque flag, which, again, oh, got on one theme, I do have it here with me for the viewers. Yeah, I got this, again, free plug from Mr. Flag. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yes, look at that. Right. I do. You see, now that's... Right there. That... There's something about that one, and I don't know whether it's because I'm from the UK, therefore, and constantly surrounded by the Union Jack, for want of a better term, although I must sure. insist on calling it the Union Jack. Probably doesn't have because, nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, no, and probably doesn't at all. Um, but there is something, yeah, there's something about that one that I, I, I do like. I think it just, it works, although the green and the red, I sometimes look at it and think it shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. No, I like the one. Mm -hmm. I like this. Good choice. I like this one too. So yeah, I, I was trying to throw you off with, uh, <laughs> as you know, this is Scandinavian and Scottish. This is Scandinavian and English. I thought you may be thinking I was going to throw you something like Scandinavian and Irish, which I couldn't actually find any for because I did try. <laughs> uh, or no, Scandinavian and Welsh, and I also couldn't find anything for that. But um yeah, I was like, well, you know what? I'll get one that looks like the Union flag, but isn't. And to me, I mean, as evidenced by the fact that I own it, uh, I like it. And when I showed it to Katie earlier, especially considering when this episode is going to come out and when it's being recorded, uh, she said, it looks a lot like Christmas. And yes. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I could see it. That's, it's not, <laughs> but I could see it. <laughs> yes. Um. But it does have the same colors and I'll, I'll give like the brief because I know we're probably running a little over on time, but uh, <laughs> this is called the Ikurinya, I-K-U-R-R-I-N-Y-A. -A, Brilliant. And uh, which basically just means flag in Basque, which a lot of countries, like right, okay. Faroe Islands. <laughs> no, yeah, like Faroe Islands, um, a few other, there are other ones that their like proper name for their country's flag is just the word flag in their language. <laughs> and it's the same in Basque apparently. Okay. Um, it comes from like the short version is it comes from the Basque nationalist party that was like active in like the, I believe 1910s to 1920s. And they originally had it as a symbol for the Northern part of that territory, which that part, like the Northern part of their territory is in France, like in the Bay of, um, mm. Biscay and everything, That's, uh, yes. which I think is like somewhat even named after the Basque people in some fashion, but, and it, it originally was like for like that part of the province or that part of the territory, the autonomous community, uh, as it is now. And it kind of, nobody else basically came up with a better one for anything. <laughs> so they kind of just subsumed, like, like everyone like agreed, okay, this is the Basque country flag at a certain point. And that's like the very brief, if listeners and viewers want to know more, definitely go look it up because there's more to it than that. But the red is supposed to stand for, let's see, I had it on here. 
The red, I think, is a traditional bass color. I know the green was from the Oak of Guernica, uh, which listeners who know anything about art, Guernica's uh, Picasso painting that's particularly okay. brutal on the Spanish Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, this oak is from, happens to be from there. Um, oh. Yeah, anyway, red is Biscayne people. The green symbolizes that. And over all of them, the white cross, which is God's symbol of Basque Catholic devotion. And it's not any more complicated than that. So it's not like the, the Union flag where it's, you know, one country's laid on top of another country's kind of laid on top of a third sort of countries. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It's just, we like the design of that, but we're going to do these colors for these reasons. Yeah. And I like it. I do. I like I dig it. it. I Even... No, so I was just going to say, even with like what you previously said, the red on green is not super popping to the eye. But other than that, I think it's like it's it does fulfill the like, can it be noticed like from a long enough distance? I think that green is a like big, thick enough stripe that it can be noticed. Unlike, yep. say, like the flag of Morocco, where it's like a little green mm. star in the middle, where if you're far enough away, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see I it. I think yeah. this is a little better. Yeah. Yeah, that, that pentagon on Morocco could be so much bigger. They've got plenty of space to use on their flags. <laughs> but yeah. Right? It's it wasted. But yeah, I, you, you're right. I think you say it's big enough and it, it is recognizable and it can be drawn fairly simply. So um, it's, yeah, I, mm. I just like the idea that it, it, it sort of looks like the UK flag, but isn't. And as, as you said, there's no connection at all with it whatsoever right um, culturally or any other yeah it's just nothing at all a neat yeah. design yeah yeah so there's us thinking that we've got the unique design and uh, and then the basques come <laughs> along with it <laughs> probably turn around and go yeah we can do it better <laughs> yeah well you guys have put yours on the most other national flags so you still have that distinction <laughs> don't uh, just anyone who knows me yeah knows it's a whole that, different that, episode <laughs> just, yeah Rain it in. Hey, hey. <laughs> I know we're not at the end yet, but if you want to come back and do that episode, we can. <laughs> I think, yeah, let's let's hold on to that one and then we'll cover. Yes. I'd love to have you, you back in any capacity and, and that's one. <laughs> I'm just not sure anyway, to, be able to keep it. You got one on more one. and then um Yes. Sure. I, I've I've got <laughs> yes, my my final one, which uh, uh again a bit like yours is um is 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 different to the first two completely. Um but as we'll get to there, you'll understand why I've chosen this one. Um, so again, I can't find the the, the official terminology, uh, but on this one, however, I will describe it. It is um, it's a tricolor, horizontal tricolor, with uh, gold, green, okay, red. Easy, at the should be easy. Yeah, this one's easy. Um, and in the middle, is gold, it gold, green, and red. Gold at the top, green middle, red at the bottom. And in okay. the middle is a huge white circle. And in this circle that sits perfectly within the circle um, is a bird. And the bird is made up of purple and green and uh, shades of green, to be fair, um, uh, staring back at you. Yeah, that's pretty much that. And it, it was a national flag. Okay, so this used to be a national flag and no longer is? Correct. And what, sorry, you said gold, green, red going from top to bottom. That's it. And then a big white circle in the middle with a bird that's face on. Is it just the face of the bird or do you see the wings or anything else? No, you see the whole, whole of the bird in all its glory facing at you. Oh, my God. Uh, can you give me a continent? <laughs> Um, I, yeah, it's, this will be in Asia. <laughs> if that narrows it down a little bit for you. <laughs> yeah. The biggest continent. Hmm. <laughs> I. <laughs> Macaw. I do not know. Right. No, that's fine. I, I, this, I, this was a bit of I a. I yeah. do not know. No. So this <laughs> is. The, the the flag the old 1943 flag of burma and hang on let me 
if I share. Oh what, wow! Okay. Yeah, what the picture is, and, and then it'll all make perfect sense once I've shared the picture. With so you. okay, so the current Myanmar flag does have those three tri bands, although not in that order, if I'm right. It Correct. has green, yep. gold, and red. I think. Yeah. Okay. And then like a star in the middle. Yes. Yes. So it's pretty much the same flag, but instead of this, it now has the star. Yes, you're right. Okay, so they are still in that order on the current one. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And I've sent it over to you. So it's a peacock. Just say, yes. just say, okay, I see why you did this. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will be on record calling you that, apparently. That's fine. I didn't it. want to be, but I am. <laughs> so, Terrence Peacock has sent me the peacock flag of Burma that lasted for what? What'd you say? Five years? Three years? Oh, yeah. Not very long. Yeah, it was Whatever there it was. working well until a certain group of British people turned up and took over. And then they got rid of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but like we're... so many other countries, which again, we don't have to get into. We, don't, we won't get into that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, not right now. But okay, right. okay. So this was like so. So g give me the years again, though, because I do want to understand this flag. Historic. So okay, let's get the exactly. If I just come out, so the years of that one were. So yeah, this came into play in nineteen forty three to forty five. So it was only a couple of years they used that one. They had used oh, okay, a version okay. of a of a peacock previous to that. Um, but it's in different styles. But yeah, that's and they did use. Uh, the, the British did use a version of this as well in their Blue Ensign um, for Burma, as it was called that back then. So, yeah, in the British Ensign, it was, again, right. I think, a, a version of this peacock in uh, on the fly side of the, uh, the Blue Ensign that they had for a while. Um, and then eventually, okay. yeah. yeah, when Myanmar came back to its, well, they've had a couple of different flags since then when the socialists got involved. And, oh, yeah, very exciting. Um, Yes. So, and then the, the peacock never returned. Uh, once the the British moved out and the socialists took over, it, it was it was left in the night late forties and never to return. But the too bad. The, yeah, the peacock. However, it it comes from what the um, the king's tribesmen uh, would wear peacock feathers. Um, so obviously when the Brits turned up, that was one of the first things they saw. But obviously they, they had used it as part of their national flag because it's what they represent as the hierarchy. Is the top bod was the one that had all the right. peacock feathers in some sort of crown and glory. Uh, so therefore the peacock was their bird. Yeah, I was going to say that had to be linked in some way. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, and I imagine, so yeah, it, that's a very interesting color scheme i mean like on its own if you just take the field the the stripes like yes that's very i don't know one would almost say like african it's not the pan-african colors but one would no. say borders on african close on it yeah uh, maybe caribbean mm -hmm. um or like yeah but with the peacock being completely different shades of green to the yeah. stripe, I mean, I guess the one in the middle is similar. And then purple, because purple is only like on, I think, like Dominica's flag. I think that's in the, the bird, only one. In the parrot, if yes. There's, yeah. Yeah, the bird of parrot. Yeah, the parrot, whatever parrot, it is. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, so this would have been like, I guess at the time, maybe one of two flags that had purple on it. Yeah. Although I yeah. can't verify that, but. It wouldn't have been one of many. For no, sure. not so many. I don't know what Dominica's know, yeah. flag was like at the time. Ooh. Dominica may have even just had a, uh, you know, British ensign and some other. Although it may have still had purple, but anyway. Anyway, yes. We yes. don't have to go into all that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, yeah, that's our three flags. Yep. That is uh, probably about time to pass time to wind down. So. Tareth, I was going to ask if you and, you know, Flags in 50 had anything exciting, any interesting announcements, anything like that coming up. So, um, yeah, there's there's a number of things I'm, I'm, I'm toying with at the moment. Um, the name is, as we mentioned at the top of the, uh, of the episode, um, Flags in 50. 
still trying to work out whether that's still relevant in today and whether I should do a bit of a rebrand on that to make it more encompassing of, of where I'm trying to go with the channel. Um, so I'm still in a bit of a, a quandary on that. Um, I've reached out to a few people, including your good self, just to get some some feedback, uh, which has been invaluable. And um, uh, yeah, I guess there's, there's a mixed bag, um, but I'm still small as in the channel, not me literally uh so you know if i'm going to change it then <laughs> now's a good time um so th there's that but then yeah the other things I'm, I'm looking at for for next year i'm trying to do a few extra different things i'm, I'm wanting to look at um i will th there's a few sort of documentary style episodes that i want to explore um i've tried one so far this year um which did all right, got involved with a few people um, about uh, a taxi trip that some friends of mine took from yeah. the UK all the way down to, uh, Mor uh, not Morocco, they didn't actually get to Morocco, but, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten, the, 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 the Spanish. That, that one was tips. very cool. Now, I, yeah, I, I, although I did a lot of work of that, a lot of research, but I quite liked that. So I want to look into doing those types of things as uh, going a bit more mm. in forward. And also I've got, um, just to hear it here first, um, I'm doing a, a, some flags on a film series, a franchise, and I've reached out to um, a couple of people who, who do location, go around to different locations where certain films are, are filmed. Um, and just, the, just to get their geography right and to make sure I get the flags right. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at starting something along those lines next year, as well as the usual that I'm doing at the moment. So that's that's where I'm going at present with that. Awesome. Yeah. And where can people follow all of that? So the predominant channel is my YouTube channel, Flags in 50. Uh, that's, that's where the bulk of it is. Mm. Um, I am on Instagram, which is a similar, Flags in 50. Um, I do have a TikTok, again, with the same, but uh, to be fair, um, you're a god compared to what I do on TikTok, uh, and that's saying something, so <laughs> that, that just puts it into perspective uh, on how well I'm using TikTok. Something, <laughs> so, um, something and, yeah. Yeah, something, and um, so, yeah, Instagram, oh, and Facebook, of course, I, I try and keep everybody up to date with what's going on on, on Facebook as well. All under flags. Yeah, of course. Thing. So... Yeah, so go follow Flags in 50 everywhere that you can. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, I'm sure you've seen Tara's stuff pretty much all over the place, as well as you can see his flag right here if you're a viewer. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah, like I mentioned up top, like I'm sure I mentioned up top in the intro that I haven't recorded yet, I probably mentioned that there would be a video episode of this. In any case, you can follow him at all those places. You can follow the show at flagged the number four content on most social media. Don't get it twisted. The show is called flagged for F O R content. I know some people have been having issues like trying to follow us on various things or whatever, but uh, not much should be changing with the show other than the way that you hear it. And now you can see it. So that's exciting for us. And that is mostly courtesy of flags for good which I will have plugged at the top of this episode as well. So in any case, yeah, follow Tarith at flags and 50 on all places. Follow us at flagged for content, mostly the number four. Sometimes it's F O R. And I think that's pretty much all I got, except I always feel like, Oh shit. You're not going to believe this, but I forgot how to end the show. Um, I feel like there's like something I could like say here, but I can't honestly think of anything. Do you have like any way that you would want to end it? I think just to keep it really simple, I like to just think of let's just tell everybody who's listening and watching, keep on flagging. Keep on flagging. Simple enough. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching y'all. This was super exciting. Thanks Tareth. And we will see y'all in a couple you. weeks. Take care. Ta-ra.